All right, welcome to lesson 8.2.2. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> I feel better now. Thank you for waiting for that. All right, <laughs> there's a welcome to the lesson, huh? All right, today's lesson, what we want you to uh, get from this is the multiple representations uh, for quadratics. Now, you probably remember from the linear lesson in Chapter 4. Well, maybe you don't. I don't know. This is called your, your web right here. And remember that for, for linear equations, we had the rule, the y equals mx plus b. From that, we could graph it, we could create a table, or we could even tell you a situation. Or if we had a situation, you could do the other things, or a graph, you could do all these things, or a table, you could do all these things. Well, that's where we're headed today. We want to be able to take our quadratic equations and whether it's in a table form, a graph form, a situation, or a rule, or an equation, and we can create all the different things from there. So <clears throat> we have kind of a cool lesson that you're going to be working with. So we're going to be working with what's called the water balloon contest. Okay, And you're going to notice that there's going to be uh, charts like this, and you're going to have to be graphing different things, and you're going to have to be making x, y charts for each of these different things. So before I kind of get into the problem, let me move you to the resource page that you should have graph paper on, and you should be copying down these things. So I'll tell you what to copy down, and here is your resource page. It's the water balloon contest. Uh, it's lesson 8.2.2, and notice that the scale, the height in the air, how high the water balloon goes, goes up to about 35. So you should make sure that yours goes about as high as 35. And it also goes from 0 to 18 feet out this way. So make sure you have your graph labeled with that right there. <clears throat> this is distance in yards going this way and height in air going that way. You should scale it using your scales here. And you should do that. I would use the exact same scales. That It's a one for one type thing here. Um, those are kind of nice. You're also going to need to do a, uh, an XY chart. You're going to need it for Maggie's toss, Jen's toss, Imp's toss, and Al's toss. So pause the video and make sure you get all that put down, and I'll see you back when you get back. All right, you are back with me now. So moving back to question 851, the water balloon contest. And here's what happens at our water balloon contest. Every year at Newton High School, they hold a water balloon contest that during the halftime of the homecoming game, each contestant uses a catapult to launch a water balloon from the ground onto the football field. This year, you're the judge. You must decide which contestants win the prize for the longest distance and highest launch. Fortunately, you have a computer <coughs> that will collect data for each throw. The computer uses X to represent the horizontal distance, that being this distance, and um, Y to represent the height the balloon reached. The announcer shouts, Maggie, you're up first. She runs down and places her catapult at about the three-yard line. So she places hers at the three-yard line. After Maggie's launch, the computer reports that the balloon traveled along the parabola of Y equals negative X squared plus 17X minus 42. So you'll need to chart out Maggie. You'll need to start, you know, chart her out for th from the three yard line on up and see how high her throw went and where did it land. Then you hear over the announcement, Jen, you're next. <clears throat> Jen runs down to the field, places her catapult at the goal line and releases the balloon. The tracking computer reports the path of the balloon based on the graph right here. So you can use that graph, and from that graph, you're going to come up and put together the chart here. Third contestant, Imp, accidentally launches the balloon before you're ready. The balloons launch, the balloon launches, you hear the roar, or the roar of the crowd, turn around and splat. The balloon soaks your computer. You only have time to write down a few partial informations about the balloon, about the balloon's path before your computer fizzles. By the way, this is what you wrote down right there. <clears throat> 
Finally, the announcer calls for the last contestant. Al, with your computer broken now, you decide to record the balloon's height and distance by hand. Al releases the balloon from the 10 yard line. The balloon reached the height of 27 yards and then landed at the 16 yard line. So you get to figure out the XY chart from that and you also get to graph it from that. All right, here's what you're gonna do on your homemade lesson 8.2.2 resource page. Um, as we already talked about, you're creating a table, a graph for each of them. You need to find the x-intercepts for each parabola. Um, and then hopefully you can start to figure out what do those x-intercepts tell you. I want you to also find the vertex of each parabola. Vertex, remember, is the highest point that it reached. What are the coordinates of the highest point where it reached? <clears throat> What information does the vertex tell you about each balloon throw? So, you're going to be calculating out all that information and filling out the graphs, filling out this. One last thing I would like you to try and do. Now, this is not required. This is only for my, um, my more advanced honors and accelerated kids, is see if you can create or figure out the rule for each equation. Now, I think they gave you the, I can't remember which one they gave you for. They gave you the equation for, I think it was Maggie. But see if you can find the rule for the other ones based on either the graph or your uh, chart that you put together. See if you can do that. If not, that's all right. We'll kind of talk about that in class. And uh, hopefully that makes sense what you're doing. We'll see your wonderful balloon toss results when you get back to class. Bye-bye.